Good morning and welcome to ASI's Tuesday Morning Show, where ASI's most outspoken editors talk promo products. I'm Melinda Lagos, and it's a it's a dreary day, I would it say, is. in Fremont mm. today. And did you guys know that half the um, street is out of power? We lost our power here in the office this morning. Scary. Oh, yeah. So Joe maybe was we're scared. running on generators. I think. He asked me to hold him. Is that why there's no air? <laughs> is there a mouse again? Mouse okay, so meters? we have a very big, exciting show for you today. Um, we have a special guest. Rich Carlgard, publisher of Forbes magazine, is going to be with us in just a few minutes. So it's very excited. Um, of course, Rich is going to be our keynote speaker next month at our Power Summit, the ASI Power Summit, which is going to be where, Andy? In Scottsdale, Arizona. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we're very excited about that. He's going to talk at the Power Summit on um, you know, ways that companies can grow faster. So that's something that um, everybody's going to want to come to. Um, Joe? Yes. We've got some other things on the tap for today's show. What do we have? We do. We also have taxes to become a better negotiator, ways to delight your customers. Kathy's going to delight us with that. <laughs> uh, we have tips for attracting top-notch interns, 10 things successful people never say. And we have signs your rock star employee might be uh, leaving. Ooh. Okay. Well, hopefully none of you are exhibiting <laughs> those types of signs. <laughs> All right, before we do the news today, we're going to go right to the phone with our special guest, Rich Carlgard Carl from Forbes Magazine. Good morning, Rich. Good morning. We're very excited to have you on the show today. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. All right. Well, as I mentioned, Rich, gonna, Rich is going to be at our Power Summit next month, but um, we're going to grill him today and uh, get a little sneak peek of the things he's going to be talking about. So, Rich, I'm going to start off by asking you, you know, as a business journalist and publisher of Forbes Magazine, you obviously cover the impact of Washington politics on business growth. Um, what are some things that should be on business people's radar radar now radar right now? Um, is it you know I know the Affordable Care Act is one thing that people are concerned of. Uh, what are some other things? Well, I think uh, how the Federal Reserve extracts itself from the situation that it's created over the last five years is on the minds of everyone. I was at a global real estate conference speaking in Singapore a couple months ago, and all the major real estate investors around the world have seen this incredible appreci appreciation of both residential and commercial property in major cities around the world, and uh, uh, everybody who's been invested in that has benefited by that. But the minute the U.S. Federal Reserve raises interest rates substantially, that probably goes into reverse. So I think, uh, I think that's a really important one for a lot of business people to watch. Rich, um, a successful entrepreneur. Um, you've obviously won Ernst & Young's Entrepreneur of the Year Award, and you're also a private investor and board director. What are three lessons you've learned over the years that are essential for making a business succeed in, e in any economic climate? Well, I can tell you as a board director and as an investor, a mistake that I've made twice and I hope I won't make again is to think that you can run a company from the board of directors. You simply have to have a great, passionate entrepreneur. And almost always, the thing about these great entrepreneurs is that they're lacking something. If you think of a, of a great company as a triangle of forces, great companies have great strategy, they execute extremely well, and they have deep cultural values that create loyalty, trust, and so forth, that the best entrepreneurs aren't typically going to be good in all three of those. So what you really have to look for is an entrepreneur who's aware of that and brings in people who complement their strengths um, and build, uh, begins to build a team that is greater than the sum of the parts. Uh, Rich, let me ask you along those lines. When you're uh, a board director uh, and you're looking for that type of person, um, what are the characteristics that you're looking for? You want uh, indefatigable energy. You want... Um, somebody who's both optimistic and skeptical. That is to say you want somebody who's really optimistic about the long run but is, but is a bit paranoid and skeptical about the short run. Optimism doesn't always cut it if it's not tempered by a skepticism, a real-world skepticism. And I've seen a lot of failed entrepreneurs who don't have that uh, skepticism and they get into this trap of believing their own uh, hot air, and they get into trouble, and then they end up wrecking their credibility. So you want somebody who's brutally honest, and as I say, you want somebody who's self-aware to know what their strengths are, to 
also know where they need improvement, either self-improvement or whether they can bring in somebody from the outside who complements their own strengths by adding to where they're not strong. Hey, Rich, in the global, uh, global marketplace, what are some current opportunities and challenges? Well, the global marketplace, you know, everything is, everything is slowed down. One of the hallmarks of uh, this recovery from the recession, statistically, we started the recovery in June 2009, and the U.S. economy has averaged 2% growth instead of its normal 3% growth per year, and the global economy has slowed from about 5% of two, the last two decades to about 3%. So there are pockets of opportunity. The investor, uh, both the investor and the entrepreneurs, just have to be more discerning where those opportunities are. And, you know, you have to keep an eye on the global macro forces, such as U.S. interest rate policy. So, you know, I, I begin to think that investing in real estate now, after a five-year boom in major cities, is probably not the wisest thing. And what about some uh, opportunities? Well, there are always opportunities. You know, even uh, if you have, in, in the case of the U.S., you have a $16 trillion economy. Even if it's growing at 2% instead of 3%, it's still creating a lot of opportunity. The opportunities are clearly, you know, the, the most important thing that anybody can learn is simply to believe in Moore's Law, and that is the progression of technology. I once talked to a very successful uh, venture capitalist in Silicon Valley, uh, a guy named Don Valentine who started Sequoia Capital. Sequoia had funded everything from Apple to Yahoo to Google. And Don Valentine said, the secret of my success is simply that I believed in Moore's Law, and I made projections. You know, if, if technology was going to be here today, but, but in five years it was going to look like this, then what were the new opportunities that would be enabled by those technologies? So it's understanding where the curves are going and, and using some imagination to get ahead of those curves. Rich, in your latest book, which is called The Soft Edge, where great companies find lasting success, you uh, actually share a surprising third element in addition to high performance and superb execution that's required to gain a competitive advantage in business today. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, it goes back to this idea of a triangle of forces, which is given to me by Fred Smith, the founder, CEO, and chairman of FedEx. And F Fred was describing why FedEx has been successful since, since founding in 1971. It's about $50 billion in revenue. And by the way, even over the last 10 years, it's been a great stock market performer. And he described this triangle of forces. You have to be really thoughtful about strategy, which is to say you need to know your marketplace, your competitors, your customers, the disruptive threats coming around the corner. You have to be really good in execution, which is a fancy way of saying don't waste time, don't waste money, use technology well, use data and analytics well, use your capital well. And then the third side of the triangle, the neglected side in many companies, is the side of cultural values. That's where you create trust, loyalty. It's about having great teamwork. It's about having great organizational learning and it's about having a great authentic story that is both useful in the outside world when you're trying to sell your products and services, but useful on the inside as a way to motivate your employees. Let me follow up on that just a little bit. What do you think companies are doing today, or great companies that you see as far as culture is concerned, what are they doing that uh, is leading them to that kind of success? Well, in the book, I wrote about a variety of companies because I was looking for principles that you could apply across a broad range of industries and a broad revenue range size. One of the companies I looked at is Northwestern Mutual, the insurance company. It's been around since 1857. It's $25 billion in size. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a hard time picturing myself getting up every day and making 10 cold calls a day to sell whole life policies. But that's what this force of 10,000 field reps do for Northwestern Mutual every day. And not all of them make it, but the ones that make it really have a trust in the deep purpose of their career. And Northwestern Mutual is very conscious about doing everything that it can from, from great ethical behavior to training to having, you know, uh, watching regulations so that the field reps don't get tripped up in any way. 
uh, so that the field person who's going out there every day and making those 10 cold calls has trust that if they do this over a period of months and years, it's going to work out for them. And in fact, the Northwestern agents that have been around for 10 years or longer have pretty lucrative lifestyles. Okay, so in addition to all that, at ASI's Power Summit next month, you'll be talking about five factors that will drive business success in 2015. So can you talk about one of them as a preview? Sure. <clears throat> Smarts is really important. You know, there isn't anybody out there who's running a business that doesn't secretly think that if they had smarter people working for them that they would do better. But everybody thinks that. Everybody kind of has the people that they have. And the whole idea is not to go out and recruit this team of people who look like superstars on paper, but to work with the people you have to make them more intelligent as a team on an ongoing basis. So I'm going to talk a lot about that. And one of the examples I'll use is from the world of sports and this great interview that I talked about in the book with the basketball coach for Stanford University, Tara Vanderveer, who's coached there for over 30 years has a lifetime winning percentage of 84%. She's won an NCAA title. She's won an Olympic gold medal as a coach in 1996. And how she's able to work with athletes who aren't the best athletes, uh, but is able to create these consistently good teams and how she goes about doing that. One of the secrets is that she borrows ideas far and wide, both within the basketball industry, but she looks for a lot of great examples outside of basketball that could be applicable to our teams. And it's a great model for how you create an organization that keeps getting better over time. So what's something that she's borrowed from business that she's put to use in basketball? Well, uh, one is that she was, as I mentioned, because of the academics at standards at Stanford, it's often hard to get the best natural athletes. And so she has to work with athletes who are pretty good but may not be the fastest or jump the highest. And she found this very unorthodox track coach who said, you know, uh, people can run a lot faster than you think they can, and they can jump a lot higher than you think they can if you give them these kinds of drills, none of which were ever covered by uh, anything she'd ever heard about in the basketball liter literature, but were just sort of one imaginative track coach's ideas of how you could do that. And over the course of the season, her team improved uh, each the average improvement of vertical jump was eight inches. There isn't anybody in basketball that would tell you that's possible. Wow. That's great. Um, now, Rich, you've also been working on a new book, and that's about the science behind high-performing teams. What are some insights that you can offer for business owners who need to create environments where people can really produce, sell, and innovate? Yeah, I think there are two things that are emerging from this, and the, the science really has to do with uh, neuroscience and social science and all of these all of these sciences are telling us that why why do some teams really gel and you get a high performance and why do some other teams that may have equally talented people on paper go the other way do not gel and underperform two things have really emerged from this and that is the best team size is about eight or ten or twelve people and if you have a company bigger than that, figure out a way to really divide, you know, people into eight or ten or twelve. You know, you have a company of fifty people, it's probably wise to have about five or six or seven subsets within that company of fifty people that can accomplish things. Because when you get when you when you get more than twelve people on a team, people stop looking out for each other. Transparency gets worse. Uh, people won't uh, step in and help the, the person on the team who's struggling. All of those dynamics begin to fall apart after 12 people. In fact, Jeff Bezos of Amazon calls it the two pizza rule. If it takes more than two pizzas to feed a team, your team is too big. The second is the power of cognitive diversity. You know, there's a lot of talk about racial diversity, gender diversity, and all that's noble and good, and, and companies should strive to do that. But a lot of companies just do that to check off boxes that will get the government off their back. Uh, and what you really should do is use that opportunity to go for cognitive diversity. You want creative thinkers, you want disciplined thinkers. You want left brain thinkers, you want right brain thinkers. You want people with a lot of experience, you want fresh minds. Now the trick for the manager is that it's harder to manage a cognitively diverse team. 
particularly if you throw in racial and gender diversity, but you're going to get more out of it if you manage it well. The temptation of managers is to go for the high mediocrity that you'll get if you hire people who look and sound like you. All right, great. Well, Rich, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, great insights, and we're looking forward to hearing much more from you at the Power Summit next, uh, next month in Arizona. So thanks, and have a great day. Yeah, I really look forward to it. All right, we'll see you then. That was Rich Carlgaard from Forbes Magazine. Um, if you're interested in the ASI Power Summit, to learn more about Rich and our program, go to asicentral.com slash power summit. Wow, that was great. It was great. I love the two pizza rule. Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't him. He said it was Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but that's, that's really fun. Or one box of donuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll modify it for our own office. <laughs> so he said, as a leader, you need to be an optimist and a pessimist. So I think... If we were to combine a few of us in here, we we'd would have the that. perfect leader. I mean, <laughs> Kathy with Joe combo, me and Andy. I don't know, Nicole, you, maybe you're the perfect combo in yourself. <laughs> I don't know about that, but it <laughs> could She's be. optimistic about her pessimism. Hey, can I tell you? Yes, I'm, that's I'm true. I'm perfectly <laughs> happy with high mediocrity, too. <laughs> I know, I look right at you when you said that. That's the problem. <laughs> well, yeah, but then we've got this, so I don't know what to tell you. All right, Andy, why don't you give us the news? <laughs> All right. All right, we begin this morning with good news for the ad specialty market. New ASI research shows that distributors increased their revenues in the second quarter of 2014 by 6.1%. That follows a Q1 gain of 6.4%. In the second quarter, 59% of all distributors said they increased their sales, with only 13% saying their revenues fell in the period. The gains were felt mostly by large distributors, as 74% of those with over $1 million in sales said they grew revenues in the quarter. Top 40 news now. The assets of Camps and Global have been sold to private investment firm Capital Supply Group. The deal is expected to officially close within the next few weeks. Capital Supply says it expects its investment to help support the growth of Camps many supplier brands. Check out Permogram today for details. On to awards news now. PPAI announced yesterday that it will induct industry vet veterans Fran Ford and Paul Kiwi into its Hall of Fame. Ceremony to induct Ford and Kiwi into the Hall of Fame will take place in January. Top 40 financial news now. Bitgraphic announced a 0.7% rise in sales in the first half of 2014. The supplier also recorded a 0.1% revenue increase in the Q2 period, marking the second consecutive quarterly gain for the organization. And finally, make sure to check out the newest episode of The Joe Show and Promogram today. Joe, what is hot for today? An iPhone case made out of real wood iPhone case made out of real, real wood? wood. Okay. Not fake wood, but real wood. Can you knock on it? You can. <laughs> if you want. Just keep it away from woodpeckers. <laughs> and termites. Uh, and All termites. right. We are going to pause for messages from today's show sponsor, Haynes. And when we return, Andy's going to tell us how to be better negotiators. Haynes Branded Printware has a new website designed specifically for screen printers and promotional product distributors. HanesInc.com features detailed product information and resources to help you make the most of Hanes t-shirts and fleece. For the first time, you can download high-res front and back hollows of every product in every color in the format and resolution you need. Apparel pages are organized by color and product line, so you can easily find exactly what you're looking for. In addition to high-res hollows, you will also find helpful sales tips on every product page. Each product is assigned a helpful return on investment scenario to illustrate the untapped return potential for you and your customers in every interaction. In our resources section, a dedicated return on investment page provides additional questions and insight to help you better understand how to meet your customers' needs with better products and better guidance. Visit HanesInc.com today for high-res hollows, sales tips, and many more resources. Welcome back to ASI's Tuesday morning show. Andy Cohn, we all have to uh -oh. negotiate in our lives. We do. And um, you've got some tactics. Especially tactics. our listeners. <laughs> you've got Bless some me, more tactics listeners. To, um, <laughs> to become better at that. So what are they? All right. I'm going to uh, talk about a few tactics here, and we'll post the rest to our website. Um, the first is when you're going into any negotiation, um, create goals. You know, have uh, Figure out what you want out of it. Um, try to determine what you, uh, the person on the other side of the desk also wants out of it. Um, and secondarily, have a plan B. You know, things don't always go as planned in a negotiation. So think about uh, what your plan B is for, um, for if things go a little bit awry. Uh, second is to leave your ego at home. Um, this isn't really about you personally winning or losing. Many people think it is, and that 
that's where they kind of go wrong. Uh, it's not about you personally winning or losing. That's why the first step is so important. Know what your goals are. Know what you want to get out of it. Um, and think about what's best for your business and your client's business and really just work to achieve those goals. And then a negotiation will be more successful, not just for you, but also for your client. Um, third is uh, don't panic if a deal isn't reached. You know, many people feel like they walk into a client's office and they have to walk out with a deal. That's not always the case. Uh, you might just be able to achieve the next level of the negotiation, which is the next meeting or the next phone call. Um, you know, try to just schedule future meetings and come up with new ideas if uh, your initial goals weren't met. You know, don't panic and don't think that that's the end of it. Um, you know, don't give in. They just may, might need a little bit more time or they might need different ideas from you uh, to move forward in the negotiation. So uh, don't panic and don't give in and come up with uh, with alternate options. Uh, so we will post the rest of these to their to our website at ASICentral.com slash radio. All right. Great. Kathy. Mm hmm. You know how to delight your customers, apparently. <laughs> I know you delight the readers of Advantages every day. Oh, so wow. you have um, some tips on how others can delight their customers. Yeah, well, everybody in this industry can get behind this first tip. Start with a little gift. It uh -huh. doesn't have to be expensive. Mm -hmm. As we mm -hmm. all know, it could be $10 or less. Um, it's an easy, cost-effective way of inviting the customer to get to know you better. Unleash the unexpected. Regular perks are nice enough. Um, but look for something really original. And the more personal the gift, the better. Listen to what they say the about personal. themselves. What, like lingerie? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like Not personalize. Personal. If you can personalize like a put gift. put their name for on your, it. Right, yeah. exactly. And we do that so well in this industry. <laughs> That's right. We do. Okay. Yet people don't do it. All right, Andy, shut up and listen <laughs> to what they say about <laughs> themselves. I'm using a personalized pen right now. <laughs> I imagine telling them to shut up is not a good time. No, but I'm yeah, telling Andy to shut up. That's not terribly delightful. Okay, listen. Give your customer the opportunity <laughs> to share information with you and then do something positive with that information. Like if they shared that um, they just had a baby or whatever, send them a little baby gift. Give them priority. When a customer shows loyalty, a thank you note is just the starting point. Follow up with them to inform them of other products or services suited to their unique needs. And finally, take time to get to the real root of a problem. If somebody has a complaint, show personal attention, ask questions, and ask for their input on a resolution. What about tickle fights? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> if you're into that. Well, I think that's that came not, so I far out of left field. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. That might work in some instances. Well, we're going to put those tips online at asicentral.com. That's right. Slash radio. Um, we are so lucky to have Nicole Rollander here today. Isn't we are. Great wow. You didn't even here? introduce Nicole. I'm sorry. Well, you know, we had our <laughs> special time. guest. And yes, but Nicole Rollander, editor of Stitches <laughs> and director of ASI Education is here. And Nicole, we've had lots of interns here at ASI. And you have some tips today for attracting top-notch interns. I do. And did you know that there are some companies that pay $7,000 a month for their interns? Some really? companies in Silicon Valley. Wow. Um, and uh, law firms pay well yeah. for their interns and as well. Interestingly, I just watched the internship with Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson, and I thought I wouldn't. At your house I would, or their house? I, I, listen, <laughs> that, I thought I would. You watched it with them? It, no. I, they're <laughs> in they the talk, movie. Really? But they're interning at Google, and it's a free internship. And when was it? When did this? This is like a 2013 release. Yeah, and I have to say, screen? it stunk. Okay. Did it stink? I actually kind of <laughs> liked it. <laughs> well, well, so we have one thumbs down optimism, and one thumbs up. Optimism. Optimism. But the point is, is funny. the point is, I thought it was, you know, as I was reading this article, that the movie kind of reflected some of these things, uh, some tips, create a meaningful program. So Google has a program where they bring a in a lot of interns and they are in teams and they compete in real world situations that the company would encounter. So you should create a meaningful program for your intern. So, you know, not just give them the old filing that you didn't get to always be on the lookout. Don't wait till May to recruit your interns, be recruiting throughout the year and have contacts at universities and, you know, other people in the community who might know smart and fun interns who might be willing to come and work for you for the summer and then also reach out to past interns because they might have some great leads since they've been through your program already okay those good are tips. some good tips and you have more um than that, that even so we're going to put those online absolutely at asicentral.com yes. slash radio um joe you're going to tell us 10 successful things people never say i bet Successful people never suggest having tickle fights in the office. <laughs> no. Number one is, let's have a tickle fight. <laughs> bit, actually, I'm so going to give you be four wrong. of these. Okay. Okay, they say that's impossible. Oh, I'm sorry. They don't say that's impossible. Yeah. 
They don't say. They don't no, say that's that. Right. It's impossible. That's the most a good thing. unsuccessful people always tell you why something can't be done or why you shouldn't be dis- uh, doing something. Successful we don't entrepreneurs like those people. say it's possible. Um, I like my own idea. <laughs> successful people. Do you never say that or say that? No, they don't ever say yeah. that. Because they're good at working in teams, and that just shows a way that, you know what, I'm listening to you, Andy. I like my own idea. This goes hand in, uh, <laughs> hand, in hand with that. I don't need your input, well, that, Andy. Well, uh, let, uh, let me go back to the idea. Yes. One. Because I think good uh, good leaders, yes, they listen to other people's idea, but they also have a very good way of, when they do want to implement their idea, making it somebody sure. else's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, getting them, and kind of, on yeah, board, getting like people on board, getting by It's a team in. idea. Right. So, they're, yes, they you know, they definitely don't tout themselves well, over they don't anybody say my else. Idea. Right. They won't say my idea, sure. but it, it becomes the team's idea and they have a good way of doing that. And I Very think that's, good, Andy. that's kind of that point. That's a good okay. way to Andy's frame a leader. Andy Thank you. I don't need your input, Andy. No, I <laughs> okay, that's something. I, I know. That, that goes hand in hand with the, the free <laughs> Right. And right. finally, I already know that. That's Joe. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I know. I don't do that. Oh, I, I hate what people Joe. say. That. I already know that. Really? Then, you know, why do we end up where we are if you already knew that? Yeah. All right. So there's six other ones on here. You can read them all on asiradios.com. ASI <laughs> what? Central.com slash radio. Thank you, Joe. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, Kathy. Yeah. You're going to give us some signs that your rock star employee is eyeing the door. Now, we have a little joke in editorial. Whenever someone dresses nice, we say, oh, you're going on a job interview. That's is that one, one of the signs? That's one of the <laughs> nicer dresser before they were kind of a slacker, and then after they're wearing a suit and tie, Joe. Look, yeah, why are you not right today? today? Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking doing? pretty good today, yeah. too. I must you know, say. I cleaned my office wear nice clothes yesterday, sometimes. and somebody I asked me. You, you, look, <laughs> you look better than normal, I'll say that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> is that a backhanded compliment? Well, the other one, Kathy, is I cleaned out my office yesterday, cleaned off my desk. Oh, Carol gets nervous she when did. I do She did. She's like, are you leaving? I'm like, no. She gets nervous when I do that. Yeah. Okay, this one's pretty obvious. Reduce productivity. Once they were like rock star meeting the deadlines. Yeah, they're like, I'm out of here. They're like, eh. Right. I Isolation. Think that, I think that once you see that sign, that's <laughs> that's that's past the point. Yeah. Of saving that. That is. Okay. Isolation. They all of a sudden they're being like me and keeping their door closed. I was gonna all say that's normal. <laughs> but if we do that all the time, then we're not sitting on yeah, the radio just... show like this. So out of the yeah. first three out of the first three, <laughs> Kathy's got two. Okay. She's looking good today uh, and, and and she's isolated. Here, oh, here's another one I'm guilty of. Abnormal request for time off. <laughs> No, <laughs> but you request time off all the time. It's not yeah, I, okay. That's you're always, <laughs> all right, so it's, it's usual. Well, she, you're headed to Jamaica. You're always on a cruise. Yeah, Kathy. that's true. You were in St. Martin a few months ago. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I've you never been there. A, a that was wedding. last year. Oh yeah, uh, Cayman Island. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> bring, bring I'm sorry. It was Cayman Island. Here. Uh, one more thing: decreased interaction with other employees. That would be me. That's too. Like going with the isolation <laughs> and door decreased. closed policy. That's all normal. Okay. Kathy's yeah. not leaving. She does this stuff all the time. I, I'm just, I just suck. So, <laughs> you're just high mediocrity. It hasn't changed. <laughs> all right. It's time for our last segment of the show. Editors are going to talk about That's their right. favorite products of the week. Nicole, did you bring a product today? Yes, I did. Um, it is this cool women's top gun, gun flight jacket with patches Ooh. from Cockpit USA, ASI 43. Do those come with sunglasses too? No, they come with patches. Oh. And patches, Andy Cohen, are a hot trend this season. So if you check out Stitches, September, October uh, fashion issue, you'll to see, see many patches. leather jackets and patches are hot. And you can give a jacket like this to a top performing employee or a customer and put a company patch on there as well. Who wants to wear that? Very I do. <laughs> I think it's very cool. All right. Who wants to wear that? Let's, this, get, this on, let's get on to my much better product. <laughs> okay, Joe. Excuse Kathy me. wants to buy that shoe. So go ahead, Kathy. Okay, my, mine is um, wind up hopping teeth. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. I thought it would be fun for dentists to give out, right? Because nobody wants to go to the dentist. So late You disparage up. the leather jacket and patches to so wind up hopping I told you it was great product. It's from Brighter Promotions. I think those are fun. They, they are, are fun. fun. So you don't like leather jackets either? No, I love the patch. <laughs> all right. I can like it's just all. not quite as fun. <laughs> Mine is from Brighter Promotions, ASI 42016, and they have lots of fun products like that. All right, Andy, what do you have? Mine is a North American Atlas, which we could have used on our road tour <laughs> wow, a few year. weeks we ago. A so we might have to get that. It has maps for every U.S. state and Canadian province, and we've been to those. So this comes from the book company, which is ASI 41010, and would be great for clients in the automotive industry or insurance industries. Check it out online now. Well, 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> we did. We didn't have an atlas, but we did have CJ's special GPS. When we <laughs> that's both that's very sexily. Oh, she she did. Yeah, she did. My okay. husband Turn likes that too. She, she had a, she, she had a she shifted more, the low gear. She had a significantly <laughs> more sultry voice than my GPS. She did. All that's right, true. Joe. Why don't really you wrap odd. it up for us? Okay, I don't have my product with me. I left it on my desk. Oh, I know. Can you talk about thir- the wooden phone iPhone case? And now it's a 32 by 64 inch, 100 percent cotton towel. It's huge. Has a nice embroidery uh, design mm. on it. It's great for, of course, beach promotions, spa promotions. Anyone in the travel industry can use this. Don't forget about your swim teams, whether they're public, you know, at public pools, at private pools, or at schools. Um, it's a great idea, and it's from a supplier called Cotton Love. And you could also towel off after a tickle fight if you're all sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Nicole. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, this was just a delightful show. So thanks to all of you for participating. Thanks to our special guest, Rich Carlgard. Go to asicentral.com slash power summit to register for our power summit. And thanks to everyone for listening. Have a great week.